Hello, this is Matt Butler, and we're going to talk about intercompany uh, purchasing and sales. So um, there is a package that we'll be installing, but before we do so, what we're going to do is uh, set up some preliminary things, uh, such as a segmented key for our intercompany sites. Uh, so we'll go ahead and just go to uh, uh, keys and find that. Going to the menu, we can open the tab here, and we're already here, so we'll just make sure that we're uh, refreshed. And see, what we did was created IC site. Uh, this is important. Um, that's what uh, the code expects to find. Uh, and then uh, I'm just going to name it company ID, and I gave it a segment of the same name, and just for flexibility, um, no no uh, breakdown of segments or anything like that. Um, there's uh, uppercase Unicode, um, whatever your <clears throat> conventions are, what you're going to be storing here is a combination of the company key and the uh, branch code uh, so that you can easily identify uh, each one. So uh, moving on, um, one of the processes that we perform is to uh, automatically create sales orders in our target from purchase orders. And when we do so, what we want to do is automatically grab the sales order number and send it back to the purchase order. So what we did was we went ahead and we went to automation steps again. Just uh, start typing. Here we got some automation steps here. I'm just going to right click, new tab, and here I am. So in automation steps, I'm going to select the field, and then I'm going to pick my table name, the purchase order. Then I'm going to go ahead and <clears throat> I'm going to find my vendor reference. So the vendor reference uh, on the purchasing side is, is the sales order number on the sales side uh, on the other end, and vice versa. Uh, what you'll find is in the sales order, we'll also be booking those uh, sales orders with the purchase order as the reference number in the sales order. So you can easily uh, see the um, relationship between the two. So having done that, uh, what we're going to do then is we're going to take that package, and I've already... Uh, imported it, so uh, we went ahead and published it. Uh, if you have multiple companies uh, uh, and you want to run this, you're going to want to publish to multiple companies. Okay? And so that's uh, pretty standard stuff, uh, nothing, nothing magic about it. So uh, once that's in, before you start uh, putting together the relationships between customers and vendors or companies and, and, and your other uh, your other companies, what you're going to want to do is come into the chart of accounts and set up uh, the accounts, uh, basically the tab, uh, as uh, an asset between the two uh, companies. In this case, I have U.S., Canada, and Mexico. So here uh, I'm in the uh, U.S., so, uh, so we're in the U.S. right now, right? Uh, and what I want to do, and for simplicity, I copied this, so uh, I have Canada and Mexico, but I made it inactive. Uh, but you can see we've got uh, the U.S. and Canada, U.S. and Mexico, and on the uh, accounts, they don't have to be the same in each company. You could have completely different chart of accounts. Um, this is just for the, for the local company. So when I go to uh, my other companies, you'll see... Uh, the same thing in, in my example, but um, this could easily be an, any number at all because the configuration is tied to the vendor or customer so um, or the payment method. Uh, so uh, having said that, we created our, our chart of accounts here, and what we'll do next is... Um, We'll go ahead and, and we're going to set up a cash account against each of those because we actually want to pay and uh, receive monies through intercompany rather than actual money transfers. Now, uh, it's not to say that um, you can't do a cash transfer and perform uh, like uh, an ACH or something, a, a transfer via the banking system and and uh, credit or debit this account to, uh, you know, you, you know, e even up, uh, uh, forget the term, but that would be what we would set up. So for each of the GL accounts, I want a corresponding cash account that matches it. Now, I only need these two here, but again, I copied this one. 
I'll go ahead and say uh, the United States company does not need the Canadian Mexican um, uh, intercompany, so I'm just going to go ahead and make that inactive. Oh, it's been too long. So we'll reload that. And we'll go ahead and Canadian Mexico. Make that inactive. Okay. So again, we have our. Um, we have our uh, our intercompany uh, cash accounts, which will serve uh, for our payment methods. Okay. So now that we have a GL account to uh, uh, you, you know have have our tab uh, amongst one another uh, or amongst ourselves here, we have our um, payment method. We're going to go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and just you know. Um, we'll get into our bank. We'll make our, our payment methods. Uh, get to the screen. We'll make uh, ourselves interco. What it, really, it, it, it's whatever you want want to make it. Um, uh, IC, interco, whatever. Um, it's just going to be a, a cash payment. Um, we're going to call this intercompany AR and AP. And then uh, we do want to allow our different intercompany um, cash accounts to uh, to exist for that particular one so again I'm in the US so I don't need the uh, I don't need to enable uh, the relationship between Canada and Mexico they can manage that with their own instance I guess it doesn't like that okay so we'll just get rid of it um, so we have the US and Canada the US and Mexico this could be uh, two, this could be two, you know, 20, whatever, however many uh, 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 different uh, intercompany relationships you need to manage. Now, um, from, a, from the perspective of setting that relationship up now, um, you can set up a vendor class if you want uh, uh, and go ahead and, and default to like an intercompany uh, uh, like an inner company if you want for uh, and if you're doing more than than a few like like you may um, that's probably a good idea uh, I went ahead and just directly set up my Canada company in the US here uh, it's got uh, uh, the cash account as you can see the US and Canada cash account now if I were to go to the Canadian company this would basically look identical here. I would have the same interco and I would have the same um, um, relationship, a cash account that related to the GL account that was my tab between the two. So I made this real simple on myself. I see for intercompany and then uh, I'm going to do CA. If we go ahead and look in here, uh, yeah. So I have uh, I see Can uh, Canada, Mexico, and then uh, for posterity, again, I see U.S. That's actually unnecessary here because I'm in the U.S. Um, and what you're going to want to do uh, to speed through this is uh, once you have this all set up, we go and we, uh, it's not highlighted because I've already done it, but we're going to extend to customer. And what that does for me is gives me same record, but it's now a customer as well. And this is because uh, unless it's one way, you may be purchasing uh, from or, uh, or, or selling to. So you're going to want uh, both a, a customer and a vendor relationship for that ID. And they don't have to be the same ID, but again, for simplicity, it, it, it helps simple minds like my own. So we go ahead and we uh, make sure that we default this guy because he's only, he's only going to be used between the U.S. and Canada. We're going to go ahead and set up his... Uh, payment method, and that's real easy. We're going to add payment method, and then I'm just going to uh, add interco, and it's active, and I'm going to make sure that I'm using my cash account that is, again, that, that tab between the two. Uh, <clears throat> and you're pretty much set up. You're ready to start moving forward. Um, with every site, you're going to want to set up uh, first a um, uh, the local site, and the local site is me. So I'm in the U.S. right now. So uh, I coded these as the company key found in the tenants uh, screen. The tenants are U.S. The, the keys are U.S., MX, and CA for United States, Mexico, uh, and uh, 
uh, Canada. And then the branch codes, Corp. So that's how I coded them. So if you have um, multiple branches, you could be U.S. Corp, U.S. West, U.S. whatever. Um, and then I'm going to give it a meaningful name uh, because I'm not going into the branch branches underneath these right now. Uh, they're just Canada, Mexico, and the United States. And then uh, this can be the local instance. Uh, this can be uh, the instance you're hosting in Europe or Antarctica or wherever. Um, you obviously want it to be active. Uh, and then I'm going to give it my, my login, you know, the company I'm logging into, the branch I'm, I'm logging into, and then uh, the password. So um, I'm going to use the password uh, to, I'm going to use the password to um, go ahead and uh, put that in. This uh, should come up by default, but if it does not, uh, you can see exactly what it's supposed to be. And this is just the Acumatica ships with, um, you know, this is this is the the the, the genius stuff that they came up with. So uh, we can easily move from version to version. So this is going to dictate uh, this is going to dictate that uh, that nice uh, versioning as we move forward. Uh, okay. So um, oh, we've set up our sites. Um, so now what we need to do is set up some business accounts. So when we look up our business accounts, uh, <clears throat> when we set up our business accounts, we've got, uh, we've got a few things to take into consideration. The very first business account uh, that needs to be uh, considered is this one. And um, you're not usually used to seeing this, but you're actually looking for your company. So in this case, uh, our company is the corporate U.S. Uh, company, and this is the the um, company code we assigned uh, to um, the United States headquarters. So <clears throat> I'm just going to go to that, and so let's. Uh, show you that really quick. Sorry if I'm jumping around. So what you see here is I'm just coding to my company ID um, and this uh, this is uh, basically uh, the US. Okay. So this is the United States and I'm looking at the uh, site ID and those sites are the ones you had set up in that last step. So US Corp and you know what URL and login and everything just maps right to that business account and that's that's the from that's the me here am I uh, and and so the only thing you need to do is uh, list out who you uh, who you are um, it does require a remote account ID although uh, you're not doing any actions so uh, this is superfluous just for this one step um, it does have to be set to active. And then uh, let's take a look, uh, for example, in Canada. So in Canada, uh, we're looking at uh, the account code for Canada. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to find my customers or my vendors. Um, in this case, I'm setting up a, as the sender. So uh, when I call for anything to go out to Canada, they should recognize me as ICUS. And you can note there's not a selector here because uh, we have not implemented looking up all the account codes from the other site. Uh, but you can freeform type in whatever you put in the other site. So if this is in another language, whatnot, you can put whatever you need to here. Um, then, of course, the site ID, this is me. So the site ID is always who I am. And then I'm going to have uh, some differing... Uh, operations. Uh, for this example, I'm only showing uh, a couple, the to and from on purchasing uh, and shipments. There's also, um, uh, there's also, let's reorder this so it's easier to read. Uh, let's make that three. Okay. Okay. So, um, so it's going to operate in the order for whatever type you're doing. So if I'm doing a normal PO here, 
I'm going to have uh, step one, step two, uh, and the numbers actually, it, it, they're just sequential, so it, it's, it's, it's easier to read that way, but it could, it could be 9, 10, 11. Um, so what we have here is a PO that I'm telling, when I use uh, the Canadian vendor, I want to associate a normal PO to this vendor to go to my California corporate, or my uh, Canadian corporate, sorry. Um, and that just means Canadian corporate means I'm going to another site. Now I'm showing all out of the same site. Uh, if you are doing multiple sites, this package, uh, the package does need to be installed in every site that is participating, um, at least participating in sending things. If, for example, you are one only sending things one way, uh, you can get away with not installing it, but um, that would sort of defeat the purpose of, of the, the two-way, the handshake going back and forth. Uh, so uh, here we are on, uh, let's see. Here we are on the steps. So uh, I'm looking at the destination sites here for PO normal. I'm going to make an SO, and then I'm going to make a payment. So uh, I want every time I make a PO in, in, in the United States uh, Corporation to the, the IC, the Intercompany Canada vendor, I want to create an SO and a payment associated with it. Okay? So now... Um, if on the return side, if, for example, Canada sent me a sale, uh, sent me a purchase order and, cre and I created a sales order, what would happen then is when I create a shipment, I also have it, uh, uh, instructed to create a PO receipt with the associated shipment and tracking number and put it on hold. So that's basically my acknowledgement that it's on its way, uh, but it is on hold until receipt of goods, etc. cetera. Um, and the shipment information, the quantities, are all uh, matched up and sent on, on the on hold receipt. So if I order 10 and they can only send me five today, I'll get a PO receipt uh, on hold for five. And when it comes in, I already have my receipt ready. I just need to go find it, check check it against my uh, uh, my uh, sales or PO number or my track number, I'll go find it, uh, and just confirm that everything is received. Okay? So, um, let's see. So we had, uh, let's see, we had uh, some uh, POs. Maybe we can find a, a PO or two. I, I clearly uh, set a couple up here. Maybe we could uh, try and find one or two. Just set them up. So what we're going to do is uh, let's see this. Well, I'm in Canada. Let's, let's stick with the U.S. first. We'll show the, uh, the back and forth in a moment. Let's take a look. Okay, so what I have is... Um, Mexico, Canada. Okay, so why don't we do 95 and 94? We got, we've got the um, the relationship with Mexico from the U.S. and the relationship with Canada. So let's try that. Okay. So uh, it says it's on hold. Um, I don't need 175 thousand dollar items. Simple. Buy a couple of computers. Just buy two computers. So I've got my two computers, um, and so uh, in the background, in the background here, we have a purchase order on hold, and I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, open up the process screen for Intercompany. So here is my process screen in Intercompany, and I've added that to both the sales order, uh, I believe, and the purchasing, which is Intercompany transactions. Um, but what I have is nothing, right? Uh, that's by design, because nothing's happened yet. Now I'm going to take this off a of hold, and this is pending approval, okay? So we're going to save this, 
and once again, nothing. Now, the moment I approve this, so now it's an open PO, okay? And uh, one of the things you should note is it's open, but we've opened up in that first step, we added vendor reference. So that's because when this ships, I want to be able to update the vendor reference while this is still open. So it's open. I'm going to uh, go ahead and leave this, this field open so that when uh, we book this as a sales order, the sales order number will come over here. So now if I come back and look at uh, this screen, what I see is PO795. And what you see is, oh, you know what? I need you to make, uh, I guess I picked a, oh, yeah, I picked Mexico. Okay. So I want you to make an SO with Mexico, and I also want you to go ahead and assign the intercompany payment, right? So, uh, and that's coming straight from the order uh, here. Uh, sorry, here. So we told it, by Mexico. Okay, so um, <clears throat> we told it uh, as well as we did in Canada, we told Mexico, I, when you make a normal PO to ICMX, and let's just go to the purchase order, yes, ICMX, right? Uh, what we want to see is an SO order and an AR payment uh, to assign to it. So now I have an intercompany transaction waiting. Um, we can add to the schedule. We're going to process this uh, real time so you can see it. Um, so let's see, we probably need what, I think we have another purchase server targeting, okay, can. All right, so for uh, Mexico, what did we do? We did, um, 95 was two uh, Acer laptops, okay, so I'm going to go to Canada, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change this to Acer 2, simplicity, I don't need $750,000. Okay, so I'm going to order three Acer laptops here, okay? So now I've got uh, Canada and pending approval. And again, uh, nothing showing up here for Canada yet. See, we have Mexico, but we do not have Canada. As soon as I approve it, I now have uh, an open uh, PO for Canada. And with the same, uh, we put the same exact rules in uh, for both. And if I uh, refresh this now, I have both Canada and Mexico set up to create SOs and uh, payments for those SOs. So let's set that aside for a little bit. All right, so um, I'm in Canada right now. And uh, let's see, our latest, um, our latest sales order is 4369. So knowing that, uh, and knowing that I have a sales order coming for Canada, uh, I should expect to see the next number, whatever the next number is, is in sequence. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, duplicate this tab so we can also look at Mexico. That's also important. So let's just go ahead and go back. Uh, and again, uh, before doing any of this, let's see, 4364 completed. Okay, so uh, before doing any of that, let's just make sure that uh, in this case, uh, receivables, we're going to look at our customer. And uh, I see for simplicity. Cool. Uh, when I'm using ICUS, do I have everything set up right? Let's just make sure. Okay, I have a payment method. Let's view that payment method. Because it was copied, I want to make sure. Okay, uh, it, this is uh, in the Mexico company, so I'm going to actually say that this is to the U.S. and Mexico save and close. All right, so that's in the right uh, place. Um, I come over here in uh, Canada. I'm just going to make sure of that. Uh, see those customers. And we'll get rid of those in a minute, but I just want to see beforehand. Okay. Uh, so I see Canada should be set up right. I'm sorry, I see uh, US actually. Um, I see US should be set up right. Uh, it's probably where we copied and pasted. 19500. Uh, I know that's correct, but I'm going to show you. 
here we have uh, 19500 the account between the United States and Canada. So on the vendor and the customer side, we're using the same account. Um, if you don't use the same accounts, when you roll up your financials, you'll have to translate that uh, so that they zero. They should zero one, one another when you consolidate all financials. So, um, good. So the customer screens will kill those off and get over here. And we've got... Uh, <clears throat> We've got our um, 4369 in Canada, and we've got our 4364. So uh, when I'm done here, and I'm going to go ahead and just uh, process all. And what it's doing right now is looking through the list and then actually uh, logging into itself and then logging into the other instances, uh, no matter what they are, whether they're local or not. And it's going to read from one, send to the other. And most of the magic as far as accounting that, that's going on is actually happening uh, in, the, uh, in the configuration we set up. So it's uh, running through. Um, it's running through and it's made a SO order and a payment for that SO in Canada. So while it's still chugging along, let's go ahead and go to the... Oh, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, let's do okay. Tab again. And let's go to Canada in this one. Yep. Okay. All right. So I'm in Canada now, and uh, it turns out um, oh, I had a lot going on here, didn't I? Okay. So uh, if I open this up, let's look at this one. Probably a past test, but I'm interested. Seven sixty-two purchase order. Yeah, we're, we're way off. Okay, so um, I'm going to the proper one now. I just wanted to see that I'm giving everyone the real deal here. So I'm going to open up the latest sales order in Canada, mind you. So I'm I'm now working in the Canadian company, and this could easily be another instance, but for simplicity again. Uh, and we have this sales order, 4370. For this PO number, 794, and we have uh, the Acer laptop, okay, and then, uh, let's see, give me my arrow here, uh, we have our Acer laptop, and it looks like it's done there, it's done, yes, okay, so um, here is our purchase order in, uh, in the U.S. to Canada, right? So I ordered three, okay? Canada, so 794. Relates to 794, right? Decided to refresh it. So here's my 4370. To my 4370. So these are in separate companies, again, the, uh, anywhere, anywhere in the world. Um, and what we have is corresponding sales order to purchase order to sales order. If I go to the sales order and I look at payments, I have the payment, right? So um, one of the things I want to note is uh, the pricing. Um, if you look uh, closely at these, my purchase order, two fifty a piece for seven fifty. But again, this is using the unit price for sales. If you want to change that to be equal, uh, so that you're not making money on one another, uh, you would go about that uh, by going to your uh, sales prices, and you would set up pricing. Uh, you would set up pricing for that item for that customer, right? Uh, you could inversely set up the equal vendor pricing uh, on the uh, other side as well. Um, we are working on a sync that allows you to decide whether or not you want to add that for inventory items. That is uh, something we look at are looking at releasing um, uh, in the very near future. So, uh, because I want everything to match, I'm going to go ahead and uh, zip this down 
Yeah, we know it's not to satisfy this because we're not trying to make money off of ourselves. Um, I'm going to go ahead and save this. Ooh, I guess I should probably fix that if I'm reducing the price by 50%. Okay, so um, just a warning, letting you know you're not making a gross profit. Uh, okay, so what we have here is a sales order along with a corresponding payment. And if I look at this payment, if I look at this payment, it is intercompany going against my cash account. It's the tab between companies, okay? Um, so no actual monies are being moved physically, but the, uh, but the, the receiving and, and the, the disbursement receipt of those dollars is being recorded in that intercompany account. Uh, okay, so let's get rid of that. Uh, then we have here the Mexico side, uh, 4364, and we have 4365 with the United States. Same sort of thing. Uh, what we have is a document for two. Again, I'm going to change this to our uh, standard pricing and change our uh, payment amount. Probably not doing this right. Nope, I'm probably not. Yep. Um, let's go to the payment. Let's fix the payment. So it's a five hundred dollar payment. Just to apply. Apply five hundred. Save. Okay. Yep. There. This is, that was the proper way to do it, by the way. Not the way I did it the first time. Let's fix this because we don't want to balance on that either. Um, just to apply. It's good to see these problems in real time. Right? Uh, so let's look at the. That's not the payment. Okay. So our payment. So balance. Save. Okay. Okay. So this can be released through the standard uh, uh, processing screens. This uh, is obviously going to get chipped. So um, I'm going to go ahead and because uh, this is getting to be a long video, we're just going to ship one here. Let's ship Canada. So what I'm going to do is reorder, reorder three. Okay. So I'm going to create a shipment. Okay. Sure. Okay. And let's see. It's to uh, the United States and. I want to ship two. I only had two today. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go in my packages. I'm going to confirm it, and we're just going to say one Z. And then let's give it. Uh, uh, let's see, it's the Canadian order. So let's give it uh, this order. just just for posterity. So we can see. Okay. So I'm going to so save. That uh, actually, I'm going to confirm that uh, before I do that. So let's. Uh, I'm in Canada. Good. Okay. So I'm in Canada. I'm going to refresh this. Nothing here. I'm going to go ahead and on the shipment. Okay. So I'm on the shipment, right? I'm going to go ahead and just confirm it. And so now this is a confirmed shipment, ready to go. Um. Hmm. I'm apparently not good at this. One, let's see. Okay, so I'll save that. This is my two. Yeah, this is my two. Now I'll confirm it. Okay. So it's confirmed. Uh, let's see. It's your company. Transactions. Oh, these were the ones that were done. Oh, this is the U.S. Okay, good. So over here. So here I am in Canada, my Canadian company, and lo and behold, I have a shipment um, from Canada that's supposed to create a PO receipt, right? And so 1875 uh, corresponds to that shipment number 1875. Okay. So if I come over here and look at my uh, purchase order. Uh, I should have no receipts, and I do not. Okay? So my purchase order has no receipts. My sales order now has a shipment in Canada. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and let the intercompany, so here's an intercompany, in uh, Canada run. So we'll run that. Okay? 
And the expectation is that this is going to check off and a uh, little green uh, or, or happy fa uh, smiley face uh, icon, whatever we got going on here. And when this is done, my, expe my expectation is a transaction process. So now um, if I go back and look at the shipment, I have two, right? If I come back and look at my purchase order, I have a purchase receipt, and you'll notice total quantity of two. So if I open this uh, purchase order, my document details, I ordered three, but I only have two, right? Perfect. So it's on hold because that is really just signifying that this sales order from uh, Canada, uh, from us uh, to Canada, has this. Uh, master track number. It's always going to return the track number uh, from the first package in the uh, in the shipment. But now, now I know uh, what I'm looking for. When it comes in, I should be able to find this purchase receipt, confirm that everything is good, and go ahead and uh, take it off a of hold. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and create the bill right here. Uh, and I'm going to release it. 